So in this episode of the iPhotography podcast, I'm actually joined by two guests today. Um, this is really cool because I normally only have one or it's someone with myself. <laughs> uh, but I've got two guests. I've got John Gallagher and I've got Fiona Wynn. Both of them are really, really kind of strong photographers, though. I, I'd say both kind of quite creative photographers. They'll probably talk a little bit about their work themselves and a little bit when we get started. But they're both iPhotography members. Um, we're talking about Instagram today because the two of them, we started off a discussion in our iPhotography Plus Facebook group a little while ago um, about kind of how to use Instagram and kind of what frustrations we found. And they talked kind of quite a little bit about the frustrations that they had, things that they wanted to improve a little bit more. So I thought it kind of could form quite a nice podcast really to kind of get their perspectives on it. So John and Fiona have very, very kindly agreed to come onto a podcast with me. And I thought we'll kind of, uh, we'll chew through it. We'll actually have a look at some of the uh, the issues that we see, you know, the algorithm. I've done a little bit of research into kind of maybe what makes Facebook, um, Instagram even, <laughs> and Facebook, no doubt, but Instagram, well, hopefully we'll talk about what it makes it all tick really. And, you know, little tips that you can use to kind of improve your followership, your engagement, and just try and see if you can kind of beat that algorithm overall. So John and Fiona are waiting alongside. I'm going to invite them in and then we'll start off the podcast. Uh, I'll put all the relevant descriptions or information in the descriptions whether you're watching this as a podcast or as a youtube video so you can kind of check out any of our iPhotography courses but more importantly if you want to have a look at any images from john's instagram and fiona's fantastic instagram then please do so all the relevant links are there so anyway let's get started thank you very very much for listening to begin with keep subscribing keep listening and on with the show So, John and Fiona, thank you very, very much for joining us on today's podcast. Um, and this is a bit of a special podcast because obviously you've got multiple guests. And uh, and for people that don't know you, uh, for people that have not seen your photography before outside of iPhotography, I thought it'd be good just for you to give a little bit of an introduction to yourselves. Um, so I think it's only polite that we go Fiona, uh, if you're ladies first. If you want to tell us just a, a little bit about who you are as a photographer and what you enjoy doing, etc. That would be lovely. Um, I just... Uh, <laughs> uh, photography is a hobby of mine. Um, I don't have a specific type of photos that I take. I suppose I'm more creative than actually taking photos. I like to use Photoshop a lot. Yeah. Um, Lovely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, that's this. It's, it's lovely. I mean, you know, from what I know of you, obviously, as a photographer, like you said, you've got really kind of quite a creative range. You don't stick so much to one niche within photography. I've seen you try portraiture and, as you say, you know, composites, manipulations, etc. So, yeah, I, I, would you say you're still kind of in that creative phase that you don't want to tie yourself down yet to one particular area? Or are you just still enjoying ex the exploration of it all? I do like to explore different things. I don't like to just stick to the same genre yeah yeah and i think that's a great thing kind of you know in early days you know it's not to say that any photographer has to kind of set themselves a style or a genre unless they're maybe wanting to go a bit more professional but but how about yourself john what's what's photography like for you um i always describe myself as a bit of a squirrel photographer when basically you're walking along it's like oh oh <laughs> um I, in my photos you can see they're all diverse and different i like different styles uh, I did sort of drop into cosplay purely from that. I like the dress up side and the acting side of it sort of like came into it a bit, but I like to do the dress up. So I started going to cosplay conventions, dropped into the photography there and I, I really enjoy it because I like the people. Um, and as well as that, you get a chance to Photoshop superheroes. I mean, <laughs> what can I say? It's, it's fun. <laughs> Well, who wouldn't want to do that? And, and, and yeah, I think that's this is where the two of you both have you know similarities. And as you say, that you you just you, you shoot what you see, you know. And, and I think that's a kind of a lovely thing to actually kind of uh, embrace within photography. Sometimes if you get too nailed down into wanting to have a style or a genre, you know, you're very very specific. That yeah, you, you miss out on like the enjoyment aspect of it. Sometimes and you just you feel like you're compelled to and shoot one thing or another, really. But but kind of coming 
going a little bit back kind of on topic, really, or everything today, we were going to be talking about Instagram, because this kind of came up from a bit of a conversation that I think that you started in um, our members uh, Facebook group, John, where you were talking about how to kind of get yourself a little bit more in the way of followers or a bit more of the likes. And, and Fiona, you said yourself, you've kind of tried to kind of play the Instagram game a little bit and kind of bump numbers up. And, and it is a very, very tricky thing. You know, you're at the mercy of algorithms. Um, and we thought, so, you know, it'd be therefore maybe a good little chat to get kind of your perspectives. I've got a few kind of uh, points that I thought could be kind of quite helpful to potentially, you know, for help for helping people kind of move on a step, maybe kind of getting a little bit more in the way of followership or engagement, et cetera. But I mean, for the two of you, what, I mean, let's say Fiona first, what would you say is like the biggest uh, struggle that you find with Instagram? What do you find that's the hardest thing to do? Um, reach out to people, get people to look at your photos. Um, you don't get as many likes as you feel you should have. Mm. Um, I have recently changed my profile to professional and I have reached a lot more people that way. Oh, that's quite interesting. So is that just changing the, um, I think, yeah, it does give you like a list of different types of yeah profiles as you say you know what area that you would fall into i think i photography falls either under a website or educational something like that is that what you've changed that that little kind of section i think it's gone from um like private to professional you get you get to see like your insights and how many people have looked at your profile how many profile uh, how many followers you've gained in so many days it does yeah. tell you how many how many people you've actually reached with one photo. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's a really, really good thing, you know, especially if, you, if you're wanting to be aware of who is looking at your images and when your audience, as they say, is online, then those little insights are really useful. I think you're right. If you turn your profile away from being um, maybe to business, I think it possibly is. I don't know if it's called uh, professional, but yeah, you're on the right track effectively. Uh, but I mean, how, how about for yourself, John? I mean, what what do you enjoy about Instagram? Is is there anything that you find frustrating or, or challenging? To be honest, I, I really enjoy Instagram. Um, I, I, for other reasons, I moved away from Facebook and found myself predominantly using Instagram, which was great. And I think I think you're right with the business. I think it's creative and business. Once you flick over to that, it then gives you lots of feedback. But I've found you can only do it on your phone. I don't think it does it on the website. I can't. There's like a little blue thing at the top that you click and it gives you all your insights, which is great. But as a photographer, Instagram is just a dream come true because it's you, you're not focused on other people's things. It's your photos and what people look at. Yeah. But I, I, I moved from a personal account to completely wiping it and creating a account purely from a photographer just to experiment and see what works when I was tagging, hashtagging, um all the different things that you can do with it to see what works mm. uh some does some some do some don't but yeah um, you've, you're very right and there is i'll say a recipe necessarily but i i know from from research and obviously using instagram that there are little things that um can help you out maybe more than be detrimental to your uh, de de detrimental to your posts and i kind of come on to the things of the, what instagram doesn't like um but one of the main things that instagram does like is for you to use as many features or as many attributes of their app as possible whenever you're posting so Recently, you may have seen the CEO, I've forgotten his name, the CEO of Instagram came out and said, we're not just a square photo sharing app. So, and loads of people kind of got really surprised and a lot of photographers actually started moving to Twitter because they slightly misread it, that they just thought he said, they're not a photo sharing app anymore. So that they were pushing more of their video content, but he said that they weren't just about kind of uh, sharing photos. And I think that's kind of one of the main keys is that, uh, Instagram is outlining themselves as a platform similar to uh, TikTok. And I think that's probably one of their biggest rivals at the minute that they're trying to kind of compete against. So they're pushing the video aspect. So that's, that's where one area that Instagram really likes that for people to use the stories, reels. Um, I think Instagram TV, I think it's still a thing. I, I don't know if it's very popular. Do either of you use um, any of the video content? Not really. Uh, I've got involved with Twitch recently, but that's a different concept. It's similar what the where they're heading, but uh, uh, but yeah, uh, a different thing. But no, I, Instagram is just sticking photos for now. Yeah, I do you use it the same way, Fiona. Is it, is it just purely for photography? Uh, yeah, yeah, just 
yeah. I do yeah. use uh, the stories and stuff, but uh, not the videos. Stories are really, really powerful. Again, that's an idea taken from Snapchat. So you start to see all these little elements that, that Instagram is basically borrowed from other platforms to kind of create some sort of hybrid in a way. And, and sometimes I think it can be too much that you've got so many options, you don't necessarily know what to do. Um, but for, for those people that are listening um, that you know don't use it that much or are trying to kind of uh, break the back of it and actually get a little bit more into Instagram, um, things like the videos, the reels, the stories, they're very, very powerful um, because these are all, I say, the, the features that Instagram wants to push more and like facebook if you're using a lot of features of their site that they want to make more popular and people are using them they're going to kind of push you up their algorithms to make you appear uh, you know uh, more often and you should therefore get a little bit more in the way of engagement and for photographers that can be kind of like a behind the scenes of what you've done or a little showcase of a range of images together it doesn't necessarily have to be you sat down talking to camera because i know that can be that can feel a little bit awkward especially if you're just not kind of that kind of person not extrovert um so videos are kind of something that they really really like obviously sharing uh, content as well if you see something on another photographer's site um uh, on another person's uh, profile sorry and you can kind of share it to your story they do like that as well and again commenting i mean do you find the two of you say fiona do you uh follow photographers who you know who you really admire and you kind of drop comments on their work or like reshare any of their work i don't really follow any photographers um i follow like photography pages but not really photographers the main things yeah how about yourself john do you ever kind of repost anybody's work or, or kind of comment or engage much yeah i've engaged more with this new profile because i'm trying to keep it simple um i've started talking to photographers and uh they've been using me photographs as the i think there's the little second bit at the side of instagram where they share bits and you've tagged and they've tagged and it's pro quo where you do something for them they do something you and you get more seen um yeah. so yeah that does seem to be working not massively because i don't put a lot on it at the moment mm -hmm. but it is is getting there well that again is another aspect as to you know how you can build up followership and engagement is basically by doing things consistently you know it, it likes a sense of order and repetition not in terms of the the shots that you post but if you're if you're regular if you post maybe two three four times a week but if you do it at a similar time and like fiona was saying going into those insights is really useful because they can tell you when people are your followers are online you can break it down by the day and think even then by the hour as well is that right fiona i haven't looked at it in that <laughs> <laughs> no that's fine i think it is there though so i think you will have that ability on the insights to kind of look a bit closer and you can pretty much narrow it down to i think it's around about a three hour window that you can look at to say this is you know with the bulk of my followers you know are normally active or engaging so you can kind of you can even schedule posts for then or just if you know you've got content prepared and you can kind of post a picture out from there but the other thing that you were saying before um about what instagram doesn't like um hashtags obviously they do love but not repeating hashtags they, they're just referred to it as spamming so if you've got like a, a a set of hashtags that you use a lot so say it's like you know you're you're hashtagging the type of camera that you got or the type of photograph that you're taking if you use that set if you basically just copy and paste it again and again and again it doesn't like it so you can create yourself a small set and a very niche set of types of hashtags so if you were a landscape photographer then trying to avoid using the obvious hashtag landscape hashtag landscape photographer it's more narrowing it down to maybe the view so if you're taking a photograph of well, let's say um, the Cotswolds then you've been using um, hats, um, hashtags that are relevant to that location and any towns they want them to be that little bit more niche so they're not so they're getting a little bit more of a widespread net so people that are searching for those kind of niche words will actually get responses and therefore they will come back more and more so you're you're kind of helping out instagram a lot really with it to get it more viewers and, and more followers in that way but do, do the two of you do you kind of sit down and do you write kind of hashtags you know individually when you post or do you just like copy and paste them from previous ones uh john sorry well, with the hashtags, if you type the hashtag, it does actually tell you which is the most popular underneath it with the amount that's used. And I tend to try and go for bigger ones, but with the Whitbay and the Canal ones, um, I found I've actually gone out and Googled it, and they usually have the little Instagram logo. So you can then use that to aim it at them. So when they see them, they're more likely to use them um, and tagging them as well in the photos. 
uh, I've tagged a couple of like the canals so yeah. that they, it shows up on their feed. Um, and I found that is has got a lot more traction. Some of them, they've actually asked me if they can borrow the photos and put them on their Instagram, which sadly, they get more views than what mine do on mine. But, <laughs> you know, it, it's it's the way it is. But yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right. I've, I've done a number of images like that, 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 you know, we're just kind of throwaway images at the time, but then I tag them to, you know, your, place or another a location or something like that because i go to a lot of national trust venues um, and you tag them in there and if they really love it they reshare it out and as you say you know you get a lot more exposure from it um but it, it same goes with kind of um posting uh, as much as i say you know it's good to be consistent you shouldn't be over posting and when i say over posting i think one post a day is probably more than enough but fiona do, do you find yourself doing it regularly or is it just as and when uh just as and when at the moment I mean, I can go through phases of not doing any in a week. <laughs> no, and I think that's about fair because I think with like with any social media, you know, the more the more that you do it, you know, it can become addictive. Um, and, you know, we, we say especially, you know, it's good to kind of just have a bit of a break from that from time to time that, you know, if you find yourself being pulled into the app and feeling like, you know, you're spending too much time on there, you're playing around with things that you think, oh, I know I could be better spent doing something else. Then, yeah, I think it's good just to step away. I think the more and more you get involved and if you're running a photography business on the side, then yeah, you probably got to be a dedicated a little bit more to it. Cause it, it, it's quite an important aspect for, for photographers if you're building a business really, but do you just have like fits and bursts view owner of maybe kind of, you know, posting for a couple of days and then leaving it for a few days, et cetera. Yeah. It's, it's whenever I've got the time. <laughs> and, that, and that's it. Yeah. You've just got to build it around yourself and, and keep it as an enjoyable thing until it's, or unless it's a, a business for you or something that you're going to be making money out of, then just kind of keeping it lighthearted really. Um, I mean, in terms of kind of creating the best posts, I mean, ha, John, have you found any little techniques or tricks that you think are kind of quite useful for getting the right type of format in terms of the shape of a picture or anything to do um, with like the, the comments that you write anything? Cause I've noticed people before I've said, um, uh, long comments like big kind of uh, you know paragraphs of writing about the image don't necessarily rank all that well and sometimes short sharp kind of that's because all you get is like a little preview a line or two but those short kind of comments tend to resonate a little bit more but have you found that to be the case yeah there's, there's a couple of things that I, I like to do I'm, I moved from my personal Instagram to what I'm doing now because you don't want all your holiday photos and somebody going Right, okay, another photograph. So I try and keep it so that each one is different so yeah. that when somebody does drop onto it, they don't go, oh, there's another one. It draws them into your account. Uh, yeah. That's one thing. But when you upload as well, there's a little two-arrow thing on the left-hand side when you're uploading photos, which you look at it and you think, oh, it's not taking all my photo. If you click it, it resizes it. So if you haven't got all your photo in it, it will resize it and make it slightly bigger. Uh, that was another thing that I found that, to, uh, that improved the photos. Um, and I think there was, uh, there's, a, there's another thing. That's it. You can actually upload your photos from your computer yeah. um, using, using a little right click using the, it simulates the phone, but it does allow you to upload high quality photos from your laptop rather than having to share them on some like YouTube, go on YouTube, um, Facebook and then cut and paste it and then stick it on Instagram. So the yeah. quality is a lot better. Yeah. I, as, for, as for writing, um, I would I, I usually tag mine with uh, something to do with it because it shows investment. If it's just image number 27, it doesn't show any real investment in the photo you put on there. But just a little bit of writing or a, a tag name um, seems to get more popular views than just image 75. Yeah, I, I think some level of kind of um, description about what's going on, you know, whether it's just a day out that you've had and explaining where you've been and, you know, what you've done. It doesn't have to be kind of reams and reams of a whole story behind it. You, you're right. But I think something rather than just, you know, an untitled kind of post, because again, it like it says, it shows how much you care about the image. If you kind of care enough to post and put all the descriptions in and put the relevant hashtags in there. Hopefully, I think the theory is that you'd find followers that kind of resonate with that type of engagement and they want to know a little bit more about your story. So I think that's kind of quite a useful point to, to write something, not too much, but certainly to be a bit descriptive um, about kind of what you, you know, what you post really. Um, but I, I mean, in terms of an audience size, 
obviously, you know, you can get hundreds of thousands and millions of followers these days on, on Instagram. And I know, you know, years ago, there used to be the ability to actually buy followers, which was never kind of, uh, well, at the time it was seen as kind of like the cool thing to do to make yourself like you look like you've got, you know, thousands and tens of thousands of followers. But do you, do you find the two of you, have you ever kind of gone out and, and kind of like followed lots of people in the hope that they follow you back? I mean, Fiona, have you ever kind of tried that tactic? Because I've seen that before. Um, yeah, I have tried that. And it does work sometimes. Yeah. Um, I am on a couple of Facebook photography pages and they have um, something called like Follow Friday, where you all put your Instagram um, page on there. And I've, I've got a few from doing that as well. Oh, that's good. So you, you actually going to go elsewhere. You go to, I mean, I know Facebook and, and Instagram are the same company in effect, but you effectively go into a different platform and actually bring in people from there to come and check out your Instagram. That's, that's quite good. Have you tried that on, on like Twitter or anything like that? Do you use anywhere else? Uh, I'm not on Twitter. I could never get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> it is quite a different prospect overall. I promise you. It's yeah, not saying it's not 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 ideal for photographers, but yeah, I think if you if you know what you're doing on Instagram and, and Facebook, then yeah, kind of keep to, keep to what you know in that sense. Um, but yeah, I mean, other ways I've noticed before previously that people have built audiences up. Obviously, you know that idea of like a follow Friday and more community aspect is quite nice. But you know, if you're wanting to build an audience, maybe as a photographer using um things like competitions and giveaways they're really really kind of popular now i appreciate obviously that from an initial standpoint it's going to kind of cost you capital to buy whatever you're giving away etc um, but sometimes it's a means to an end really you know it could be giving away a photo shoot itself if you are a portrait photographer and john what have you got in screen there <laughs> you're bringing something very subtly into shot for those who are no 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 I, i'm only joking i don't do giveaways but yeah. <laughs> well, i thought you say for the benefit of people that are listening to this as a podcast i look like john was about to give us away a matchbox car there <laughs> this is not being sponsored i promise you <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that is one good way, really, because it's it's something that people are getting for free. If they're not having to invest any money themselves, you know, if it's just a case of resharing your profile, tagging you, or just kind of maybe uh, promoting your own story or something like that, it could get you out to a wider audience. And the more and more that you do that, that's been kind of quite a popular thing before. And as I was saying, if you are a portrait photographer, maybe you could offer a photo shoot for, for families, for children. Um, you know, if you were doing something more as a business, you could be reaching out to local businesses and say, look, I'll come and take a few photographs of your staff or your premises or things like that. And I'll do it for free. All you've got to do is, you know, just, you know, talk, tell people about me in effect as well. Maybe kind of re repost me on your kind of feed and, and, and hope that people kind of be attracted to you a little bit more. So ultimately, it's all networking that that really is like the whole game behind it all. But I mean, have the two of you ever been drawn into kind of competitions? I'd be interested to know if it's, if it's kind of worked, you know, from a different perspective. Have you ever seen photographers do competitions like that and been tempted to enter? I have seen them, but I've never entered. No. What, what's kind of put you off? Is there anything that you've seen that you think, nah, it doesn't really look my thing? Um, I don't know. Just didn't. <laughs> just didn't grab it. No, and sometimes it doesn't. I mean, sometimes it's the prize on offer that, that it's not tempting enough. You know, if you're if they're offering a photo shoot, and obviously you're not looking for one, then fair enough. Maybe if they're offering a camera, something bigger, high prize value, you may be a little bit more drawn in than anyone would be. But it's it's something to kind of, you know, think about in a way. Um, and Instagram does say, obviously, engaging with your uh, audience is a very, very important thing. So that could just be a simple thing is that if somebody likes your photo or drops a comment that I think you have the ability to either like their comment afterwards or, well, as well, you can reply. And they do say that level of engagement they really, really like. So if you just, if someone says, oh, wow, fabulous picture, just write back and say thank you or something like that. Because again, it's like, John, you were talking about before, that appreciation. It's not just appreciating the, the photo that you're posting and showing a bit of care about it, but it's also the people that come to you, uh, you know, and say, you know, that they've basically spent, you know, maybe a couple of seconds, but at least they've dedicated a couple of seconds to your photography. So going back to them and saying thank you very much for that or something or other along those lines is kind of quite a, a positive thing that they see. And that, again, keeps people coming back to you thinking, oh, you know, Fiona's really, really nice. She's kind of commented back on my pictures. I may go back and kind of see her. And again, it's just, it builds up that little kind of relationship between yourself and the followers. Um, 
But likes, um, have you noticed recently, just moving on to a different area, that you can now hide the amount of likes that you see on your pages? Have you noticed that before, Fiona? No. No. Okay, John, have you noticed that? No, it's the first time I've spoken, man. First time I've heard. It's a new feature, and it's there to kind of help people cope a little bit more with the anxiety. Um, I mean, and this is how bad it's got, really, for some people that get obsessed with uh, Instagram. But it's to help with the anxiety of worrying when people get really low amount of likes. So say if you got 40 or 50 likes on a picture and you normally get three or 400, people will be like worrying, oh, hang on, people don't like me anymore. I've done something wrong. And, and you know, and it builds up to be a very, very big issue for some people and, you know, it, it, almost a mental health issue. Um, so Instagram have given the option. I think you have to go through some of your settings now and it may be, I couldn't tell, I'll have to look through it on my phone. Um, but it basically gives you the option of hiding how many likes that actually comes up. So normally you've got the heart and then the number afterwards. So it, then it just says a certain person's liked it and others, and you could work it out by clicking on the others and then counting all the people if you really, really needed to, but it's there to kind of help a little bit, to take the stigma away of needing to have likes because ultimately likes don't really mean too much uh, in terms of the Instagram algorithm. They absolutely love, like we were saying before, like your video content, people sharing, people commenting, uh, you know, reposting those bits. Likes don't really have that power that much anymore. But do, do either of the two of you, have you ever maybe in the past kind of got, not obsessed, that's probably not the right word, but kind of um, bothered by the amount of likes that images get? So do, you, are you, do you kind of rate your work based upon likes then, say Fiona? Um, don't really rate them on the likes. I do tend to get the same amount on each photo. I don't seem to go. I'm not going any higher. <laughs> no, no, that's a good thing. I mean, that's consistency. You know, is is a great base. You know, if you're up and down, up and down, up and down, then then yeah, you you may be hitting something sometimes, but not doing the same the right thing next time. But to be consistent, I think everyone would love that. As you say, then if you can start to to move up slowly, you know, with a lot of the tips that we've been talking about about engagement, etc. And also, I say variation of content. I know John, you said you like to try and have things a little bit different each time, um, and that and that's a good thing. You know, if you can show a little bit of consistency with what you do. So you know, if you're quite a strong photographer, which both of you are, you know, if you can kind of show that constantly throughout all the posts. And, and try not to mix too much up because I've noticed uh, previously some photographers, they go from posting, you know, some really outstanding shots of their work. And then maybe a week later, they're taking pictures of their new shoes or their dog or something like that. And, and people then start to kind of, you get a little bit thrown because the reason you followed that person to begin with is because of their photography. It's unlikely you followed them just to see photographs of their dinner, uh, unless you did. Um, so you really kind of want to, you, you expect to see that in a way kind of in the future. So if you start to see images that are a little bit different, you think, hang on, has this person changed quite a lot? But do the two of you strive to be consistent, at least kind of posting images of your photography, or is it just a case of I'll post anything? So John, what, 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 which way would you approach it as? Um, I moved away from just posting anything on the new new Instagram account, and okay. as far as I'm concerned, it was trying to keep it to a, not perfection, but everything that on there was something that I would be proud to show as a, as as best as I can do. Um, purely from the fact that people would look at it and look down the photographs and go, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah," and not get to like you say the the shoes. Yeah. <laughs> Which I have photographed shoes, but you know, <laughs> artistically speaking, though. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How about you, Fiona? Are you are you are you conscious of what you post? Do you try to make it, you know, consistent, or do you do you not mind having that you know, non consistency? I do pick out my best ones, um, ones that I think will attract people. Um, I have had people say they've looked at one photo. And then they've gone onto my profile and liked another 10. Um, yeah, I, I had that the other day. That's really good. And I've, I've noticed people do that. Um, and like, so yeah, if you go on and people have like, liked a whole range of your images and then you could literally see it on your likes. You see, you see them one after another. And then I've seen people screenshot that 
and then stick it onto their stories to basically tag that person and say thank you. I think sometimes there's a Shall running, a, do you, yeah, if you do that, <laughs> and sometimes there's a running a risk that that person may just be spamming, and then they're literally looking for new followers, and they're just going through dot 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 dot. Uh, but sometimes you know they are very very genuine, uh, and you can probably tell that from their profile a lot of the time with the information that's on there. But yeah, basically a screenshot on it putting it in your story that's again just using another aspect of instagram which they like so yeah it could just be simple things like that if you've not got anything to post you could be sharing an old post from a long time ago on a story and it's just maybe writing a little bit about it so there's there's tons of different ways that you can kind of bring engagement you know to your profile or kind of keep it looking fresh even if you've not taken new pictures for a while but if either of you, well, if both of you were to kind of give maybe one little tip to people that are maybe just starting out using Instagram um, to make it fun and enjoyable for them as a photographer, you know, what, what tip would you give? So Fiona, let, I'll let you go first. Um, don't be too hard on yourself. Uh, enjoy it at the beginning. Yeah, and I, I think that's a very, very, very very valid point it's one of the points about written down myself that social media should be fun and and when it stops being so then you put the phone down you know and you, and you just kind of walk away and like you said have a little bit of break you know and you get that feeling that urge to come back then yeah maybe give it a go again but how about yourself john have you got a golden nugget of advice i would say this is a plug for our photography but i i use the gallery as a test bed Anything that goes in there that gets a crit on it, I either improve on it and then it goes on Instagram or it doesn't go on Instagram. <laughs> 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 Anything that's all like, oh, yeah, yeah no. <laughs> so, so if you get like four stars or, or less or something like that, you think, nah, it's not going anywhere. Yeah, near that's it. not going anywhere near <laughs> it now. I, I should post my pictures more in the gallery to rate it like that actually that's a good way of approaching it but yes for for those that don't have the benefit of the eye photography gallery you need to you need to join this is this is john telling you you need to join that um you'll have all the links in the description so whether you're listening to this or watching this on youtube then you can find out how to join a course and you'll get access to the gallery um but uh fiona john it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you about it because it's it's been kind of quite interesting getting your perspectives upon it because it's it's all very very well and good us talking about out how to use Instagram from a business point of view uh, and then also obviously that we use it every day within our work but it's interesting to see it from yourselves as independent photographers you know the challenges that are out there and what you've seen what you like what you don't like as well so I really appreciate your time and I think maybe we could uh, maybe revisit this in a year or so and see if you've actioned any of these points and actually you know take note of how many followers you've got now and see what it's like in 12 months time and we can we can do it again and, and see if we've beaten the Instagram algorithm or we've figured it out somehow I, I don't think so but it'd be nice to see <laughs> um, but I just want to say thank you very much to the two of you for coming on it's been an absolute pleasure and uh, and yeah hopefully we'll meet up in the future and we can do it again absolutely brilliant thank you okay.